Australia, the great southern land, a land of ancient secrets and breathtaking beauty, a place like no other, where time seems to stand still and the landscapes whisper ancient stories, carving out natural marvels that will leave you breathless. In this video, we'll explore nine of the most amazing UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Australia, each one revealing a different facet of this incredible country. We'll explore its lush rainforests, arid deserts, majestic rock formations, pristine islands and reefs, and the buildings that tell the story of Australia's past and present. So, let's take a look. The Great Barrier Reef is a marvel of nature. Stretching for over 2,300 kilometres along Australia's northeastern coast, this vibrant tapestry of coral is so vast it can even be seen from space. Dive into its crystal clear waters and prepare to be mesmerised. Snorkeling or diving amongst this underwater wonderland is an experience that will stay etched in your memory forever. And what I love most about this place are the fish you'll see in every colour imaginable. Darting through coral gardens, graceful turtles gliding past, and if you're lucky, majestic whales breaching the surface. It's a reminder of the delicate balance of our planet and the urgent need to protect its fragile beauty. You can also visit some of the islands and caves that dot the reef, such as the Whitsundays, Hamilton and Lizard Island, and soak up the sun on their white sand beaches whilst taking in the tropical scenery and abundant wildlife. The best time to enjoy the reef is during the dry season between May and October, which is also a safer time due to the absence of the dangerous Irukandji jellyfish. It also makes it one of my favourite destinations for a southern winter escape with its clear turquoise waters, beautiful sands and of course warm weather. Heading south to the urban marvels, we find ourselves at the iconic Sydney Opera House, an architectural masterpiece standing against the stunning backdrop of the Sydney Harbour. This iconic structure is a testament to human imagination and artistic expression. Completed in 1973, the Opera House is famous for its distinctive sail-inspired design, reflecting the boats that dot Sydney Harbour. The Opera House is not only a stunning landmark, but it's also a cultural hub hosting many performances of opera, music, dance and theatre every year. You can take a tour of the Opera House and learn about its history, design and acoustics. See a show or enjoy the views of the Sydney Harbour Bridge and the city skyline from the Opera House steps. My favourite time of year to see it is during the Vivid Sydney Light Festival held annually in May and June, when colourful and patterned light projections adorn its beautiful design. In Australia's red heart lies the colossal sandstone monolith, Uluru. Feel the ancient spirits as we stand in awe of this red giant as it blazes with fiery hues, casting long shadows across the desert as the sun rises and sets. Nearby Kata Juta, also known as the Olgas, is a group of 36 domed rock formations that are equally impressive and haunting. Both Uluru and Kata Juta have a deep spiritual and cultural significance for the Anangu people, who have lived in the area for tens of thousands of years. They consider Uluru and Kata Juta as ancestral beings and places of spiritual power, and they perform ceremony and rituals to honour them. You can explore the site by walking or taking a camel ride around the base of Uluru or taking a guided tour with a ranger. Make sure that you witness the changing colours at sunrise and sunset and marvel at the starry sky at night. You can visit year round, but I'd recommend it during the milder months of April to October, as summer can be uncomfortably hot. Kakadu National Park, in the heart of Australia's top end, is a vast expanse larger than Switzerland, and is a mosaic of wetlands, escarpments and monsoon forests. Kakadu is a testament to the enduring power of nature, 
and a reminder of our deep connection to the land. Hike through its lush rainforests, navigate winding waterways, and explore ancient rock art galleries that have adorned sandstone cliffs for over 20,000 years. Witness the spectacle of cascading waterfalls, spot crocodiles basking in the sun, and marvel at the diversity of bird life that calls this place home. The best time to visit is in the dry season between May and October, but if you'd like to see it in the humid monsoon summer with its lush green landscape, awesome afternoon storms, thunderous waterfalls and flooded landscapes from the air, go between November and April when the limited attractions are open. What I love about this time of year is the way the land wakes up from its dusty, dry season slumber and teems with all sorts of life in the lush green landscape and waterways. The Tasmanian Wilderness, one of the largest conservation areas in Australia covering 15,800 square kilometres, is an untamed place of exceptional natural beauty and diversity. Picture jagged ancient peaks, wild rivers carving through the ancient cool climate rainforests, and windswept shores lapped by turquoise waves. This isn't just wilderness, it's a living museum containing the most ancient and pristine ecosystems on Earth and evidence of 40,000 years habitation by our First Nations people. I love to breathe in the cool air, pure and invigorating. Hike amongst the gorgeous green canopy of ancient rainforest ferns, older than dinosaurs, and gaze up at the giant mountain ash trees, the largest in the country and amongst the tallest on Earth. If you're very lucky, capture shy glances of the elusive platypus playing in the streams and listen to the gnarly growls of the iconic Tasmanian devil. Tasmania attracts both adventurers and nature lovers. Hike, bike, raft, even drive the ancient wilderness where you can. Pack your walking boots and maybe a warm waterproof jacket from May to October. And remember to respect the wilderness. So, tread lightly and leave only your footprints. The Lord Howe Island Group, 600 kilometres east of Australia, is a stunning volcanic oasis ridden from the Pacific Ocean depths. Imagine emerald peaks cloaked in lush forests, pristine white sand beaches lapped by turquoise waters, and coral reefs teeming with life. Dive into this sapphire world. Snorkel with turtles and manta rays. Witness schools of fish shimmer around you and hike Mount Gower, the island's crown jewel. Let the serenity of this secluded haven wash over you, where conservation efforts to limit the number of visitors ensure that this beauty endures for generations. You can also find tranquility in luxury boutique hotels or eco-lodges. Lord Howe Island welcomes all, its mild climate a year-round blessing. It's the perfect place to rediscover your connection to nature and take the pace back a few notches. In the remote Kimberley region of Western Australia's north lies Parnalulu National Park, a surreal landscape where nature paints in stripes. Step into this otherworldly canvas where the Bungle Bungle Range, a whopping 350 million years old, dominates the horizon. Imagine towering beehive-shaped domes sculpted by wind and water over millions of years. Their orange and black stripes, stark against the blue sky, create an absolute visual symphony that will leave you breathless. But the Bungle Bungles hold more than just beauty. Explore hidden gorges, discover ancient rock art etched by the world's oldest continual Aboriginal culture, and connect with the park's rich cultural heritage. If you like, take a four-wheel drive adventure or soar over the landscape in a scenic flight, experiencing the outback's solitude and majesty. You won't regret it. Visit during the dry season, which is between May and October, to best witness this desert masterpiece in all its glory. Parnalulu National Park is a reminder that Australia's magic hides in the most unexpected places. Kigari, the world's largest sand island, lies off the coast of Queensland. Imagine 
towering dunes sculpted by wind and time, cradling ancient rainforests. Dive into this island wonderland. Explore over 40 freshwater lakes, some perched on top of shifting dunes, shimmering like jewels scattered across the landscape. Hike through eucalyptus forests, mangroves and heaths. A vibrant tapestry of nature brimming with life, with many bird, mammal, reptile and amphibian species, some of which are native and endangered, like the playful dingoes, Kagari's iconic residents, which roam free in this protected sanctuary. If adventure is your speed, cruise along the legendary 75-mile beach four-wheel drive tracks carving through endless stretches of golden sand. Unwind on picture-perfect ocean beaches, or my favourite, dive into the crystal clear depths of Lake Mackenzie, a freshwater oasis lined by impossibly white sand nestled amongst the dunes. It's absolutely beautiful. Kigari's warm climate welcomes you year-round. One of my personal favourites on this list is the ancient landscapes of the Wallandra Lakes region, including Mungo National Park, its crown jewel, and a World Heritage Site for its archaeological and geological importance. And if you're willing, it's a drivable distance from Sydney, Melbourne and Adelaide. Explore the ancient dry lake beds and witness something that blows my mind, the captivating otherworldly lunette landscapes which I couldn't stop snapping with my camera when I was there. I love the natural beauty of the walls of China, a series of petrified sand dunes that have been sculpted by the wind and water over thousands of years, contrasting different reds and golds depending on the time of day against the blue outback sky. Nearby are other newer sand dunes that also prove very photogenic. Mungo National Park also preserves the evidence of human occupation dating back over 40,000 years, believed to be the world's oldest evidence of ritual cremation and burial. Also visit the Mungo Woolshed, built in 1869 and once part of a large sheep station. The area is best explored by four-wheel drive, although do watch out for the many kangaroos on the roads, or by taking a guided tour with one of the rangers. It can be visited at any time of the year, although due to its arid climate on the edge of the outback, it can be quite hot in summer. So there you have it, a glimpse into the extraordinary tapestry of some of Australia's UNESCO World Heritage Sites. I hope this has stirred your wanderlust, so let me know in the comments where you'd like to go, and if you've been, what you thought. If you've enjoyed this video and found it informative, please like and hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Cheers.